Hey there, Booktube. Noah, everyone who reads and must converse is the channel. Happy Friday. <laughs> um, here live on the Friday is right where I want to be. A good week all the way through. And now we're at the end of it. We can chill, get some good reading in, family time, hanging out, all that on the weekends. That's what it's like for me. That's for sure. So um, I've read some really great stuff this week. One thing uh, was kind of just off the rails. <laughs> and I'm talking about The Tenant by Rowan Toper. So I'm going to have my buddy, um, PG, I ain't fitting to read that. We read that together. And uh, we're, we're just going to talk all through it. <laughs> what a book. I, I had no idea, you know, no spoilers or anything going into it. Hey, Jim. Jim reads too slow in the house. Happy Friday for sure. And um, so other than that, though, I'm keeping on the book of the new son, Gene Wolfe. I read um, maybe the first third of Claw of the Conciliator, which is the second book in Book of the New Sun. It's actually two volumes. Hey, Tyler. Happy Friday. Nice to see you. Awesome. Yeah, Jim's in the house and Jack's in the house. Hey, Rambling Raconteur, Jack. How you doing from Arizona? Uh, Jim is in the read along for Book of the New Sun. We're having some good conversation. Christy Louise Dostoevsky and Space is in on that. Uh, Tom L.A. Books is in on that. And a whole host of people. I mean, there's just 13, 14, 20. <laughs> Maybe not, not 20. Hey, Nick Voro, happy Friday. Nice to see you, brother. Hope y'all are feeling great. Steve, happy Friday for sure. And yes, I've caught a couple of your of your lives, of your streams. I catch I, I've seen a couple as well um, afterward. I don't stick around too long because it's just random and always when I'm doing something. But greetings to a fellow streamer. That's for sure. Rocking it. Very cool. <laughs> hey, book time with Ryan. Happy Friday. Yeah. Extremely small booktubers who get limited visibility. That's for sure. And, um, PG ain't finna read that seems to be maybe maybe in that kind of uh, boat as well. It seems like, you know, you, it, who knows? I, you can never figure out YouTube, man. You can never figure out YouTube. Starting out with Gene Wolfe. <laughs> That's right. I'm starting out with Gene Wolfe. <laughs> I'm looking for the new son. That's for sure. I can't wait. I'm not starting out with Gene Wolfe. I mean, I will talk about. I'll talk about Book of the New Sun. It's so weird. It's so, so weird. Hey, Quentin. Uh, happy Friday. Quentin F. Uh, Agent Reads and Rambles uh, is the channel. Cool, cool, cool. Hey, Paul. Happy Friday. Nice to see you. Awesome. The Codex Cantina. Una. Oh, thank you so much, brother. You see it. I'm sure you see it. Ah, oh, this is. I will start off. We'll, we'll, we'll show some haul. A little haul action because this is a gift from my boy Una over at Codex Cantina. I saw my last video. It's a Tolstoy video where I talk about a very powerful and impactful work. Uh, the kingdom of God is within you. <laughs> it's wild. So through, you know, just years, a couple of years now, maybe three years that I've come in contact with that book, The Kingdom of God is Within You by Leo Tolstoy. And, you know, I got a Gandhi autobiography that he wrote you know a, a, um just just talking about his experiments with the truth that's the name of it and uh he he mentioned a correspondence and there was a correspondence with tolstoy started by gandhi coming in contact with this book letter to a hindu uh written by tolstoy and responded to by gandhi and that, and, and Una just sent me a copy because I had never read it um, as far as his later works and his stuff to do with his relationship with Gandhi, things like that. I don't I, I have not dug really deep in. I guess you just have to really get a copy of his letters and read it. You know, the copy of Gandhi and Tolstoy's letters to each other. I'm sure you can find whichever whatever is available. Right. Um, hey, Josh, working man reads in the house. Happy Friday. So thank you very much, Una. I really appreciate it. 
um, buddy read action. <laughs> hey, Gorvidal. Happy Friday. Yes. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming by always. Um, if you want to buddy read it, brother, let me know. And, you know, and we'll and we'll see. We'll see, uh, you know, if the, if there's even content to be made on based on the book, other than just saying, you know, basically, you know, pretty much what I've said already. But we can uh, we can check it out. Yeah, I've heard great things about Book of the New Sun, too. Um, it really just like made me want to get uh, at it, but not a big fantasy reader. I tell you, it's it's totally not what you expect. It's totally not what you expect at all. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. 300 subs, that's 300 people, like real people. Nobody, you know, there's real people watching our uh, content. That's what it is. You know what I mean? 300 subs is more than <laughs> uh, what you can handle. As far as if you really want to interact with people and con and talk to people, you know what I mean? And that kind of stuff. And yeah, we love it. That's what we're all about here. That's for sure. <laughs> Sitting at 263. Come on. <laughs> you know, it's like you see the numbers like, come on, man. More people, you know, more people need to see this. That's for sure. Uh, there's there's a niche for everybody. <laughs> yeah, down, down, down. Me too. I'm super down. So um, I got I got another amazing uh, couple of books, and I'll go ahead and show them just because I can. <laughs> just because I can go ahead and show them right out, out here at the first. And if you saw my shorts, I don't know how many people see the shorts. They don't do great as far as reactions or, or views. So I don't know if YouTube you know shows them too much, but I don't care. I do it. Uh, I do them because I like to give people little Easter eggs. You know what I mean? I don't, it's just whatever YouTube is going to do. <laughs> hey, Lindsay reads for sure. Happy Friday. Awesome. Very cool. Everything that rises must converge is fantastic. Fantastic. I love that short story itself and the collection for sure. Hey, mind, body and novels, body, mind and novels. Nice. Happy Friday. Thanks for, uh, Thanks for uh, speaking up so that you can be recognized. And I love, you know, uh, the people that come by and share and crush an hour with me. Love it. <laughs> um, I'm sure he was very wordy, if you know what I mean. <laughs> hey, Nancy, happy Friday. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming by always. So I bought a couple of books. Um, and 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 I love um, the second one, the first one I haven't read before, but uh, always looking for some new poetry, right? So I got the Cantos of Ezra Pound, got it for you know nothing, little damage, whatever, right? But unread, basically, and it's the full Cantos of Ezra Pound. This is New Directions paperback edition. So I'm like, uh, Quentin's channel is Idget Reads and Rambles. I D J G I T. Am I right? <laughs> Idget reads and rambles. I'm not sure. <laughs> I might I might not have that exactly right. But um I've never read Ezra Pound before. Uh heard great things. There's people that love Pound, of course, right? So I'll see. I'd say that it's I don't like to talk about um poetry too much on the channel because it's so subjective and you know, if, it, if something doesn't really resonate with me or I don't resonate with a certain style of writing, then I don't want to discredit that as a valid, you know, it's a way to way to express and, and give a story, a narrative that somebody will resonate with very strongly and love, you know, just love. Yes, I hear it's a, a great, huge uh, narrative poem for sure. Yeah. And you want to talk about the Shrike. I love Hyperion. I love Hyperion. I am getting Hyperion vibes a little bit with Book of the New Sun because it is so um, uh, daring. Like, you know, it's so ambitious. The Book of the New Sun, I, I, I think that it just is. They use the word 
it's a million years in the future. They use that. They say that, you know, like that's on the back of a, you know, or that's on the dust jacket. And so I'm, but I'm like, what? Nobody really knows. And when it comes down to it that far, it's so far in the future that there is nothing uh, that, that, that they can relate to as to our time period where we're living now, like 21st, like 21st century. Right. There's just nothing there. And it's like they're when they dig, they're constantly digging through old cities and, uh, you know, there's there's certain elements to their world in Book of the New Sun that the element is is a material that they will use to build or, or use to make something. And that material is, a, a, you know, degraded uh, materials from the ancient past, which is our still our future you know, 21st century's future. So it's just, it's just wild. It's wild to, to think about. So it's real ambitious in that way. And I love it. I love big things like that. The book of the new sun is really, really weird. And it's off putting. Uh, the plot really uh, whips you around. You know, you're just, you're just knocked one way and then the other by Gene Wolfe in this plot. And Severian, is kind of like you know he's telling you the story and he also is the main personage and it's like he doesn't really know you know he's real naive he's really like just go with the flow he doesn't make anything happen constantly things are happening to him and he's being you know kind of like you know it's almost like he's the pawn he's being played in a way he's the pawn it's weird (laughs) <laughs> the can- I'm sure. I'm sure it's not. <laughs> um, um, I'll, I'll do it. I mean, I don't set, I set myself a rough, really rough kind of like per month, maybe. And then if, if you know, I, I, I'm, I'm real laid back on books and, and I don't, you know, spend a lot anyways. So if I, if it got to where it was a thing where I spent, an amount where, you know, it was not cool, then I would, uh, you know, then I would be setting a budget, that kind of thing. When it comes down to it, um, I have so much, I, I really don't have to buy uh, stuff very often, even to have new stuff to show. There's been so much that I've got and still haven't shown. And, I, I don't have time to show it, <laughs> especially like in the lives, you know, I get to talk and, 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 and people get to hanging out and talking and I, and I can show what five, six, seven books max. But the other one that I got that I'm in, that I love, I can't believe that I found this. It was a bookseller on Instagram, CS Miller books showed it and I wanted it. I said, I I claimed it right then. And it is the book of fantasy edited by Borges, uh, Silvina Ocampo and Aldolfo Bioy Casares. This, (laughs) I mean, if you know, then you know, am I right? Look at this. Look at this edition. I had no idea it was in such great condition. When I, when I just said, right when I saw it, I said, I want it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah right <laughs> right <laughs> yeah nice a bit of a, a year buying freeze <laughs> if you get something really expensive um i got a cra- i get crazy deals so like i said if you know then you know about this short story collection because there's an introduction, introduction by Ursula K. Le Guin. Not just that. We have <laughs> uh, we have a short story, Sinan, by Akutagawa, who uh, Una and I had just done some content this last Halloween. We did a short story called The Hell Screen by Akutagawa, and it was really creepy. It was really wild, and it, and it was cool. I was really happy that I that I read it. 
but I'm gonna give you some of the the authors that are in here. J.G. Ballard, Ambrose Bierce, of course, Aldofo Bori, Abioy uh, Casares and Borges and uh, Ocampo have uh, stories in here. Ray Bradbury, Lewis Carroll, Thomas Carlyle, G.K. Chesterton, Shang Su, <laughs> The Dream of the Butterfly is in here, uh, Julio Cortaza Cortazar, uh, Lord Dunsany, <laughs> Nathaniel Hawthorne, James Joyce has two, Don Juan Manuel, um, a friend <laughs> and contemporary of Borges. Uh, Kafka has two. Leopold Lugones um, is is referred to, or, or yeah, is referred to in a couple of Borges short stories, as I'm sure uh, many of these people are. Right, uh, Guy uh, de Maupassant. So uh, yeah, there's Silvino Ocampo. We got Edgar Allan Poe, Petronius, <laughs> Olaf Stapleton has a short story in here, The Universal History, right? I mean, where o Olaf Stapleton next to Emanuel Swedenborg, a theologian in death by Emanuel Swedenborg is in here. <laughs> Three Hermits by Leo Tolstoy. Remember that one, Una? Voltaire, Evelyn Waugh, Edith Wharton has the pomegranate seed in here. Oscar Wilde. <laughs> it's ridiculous, isn't it? Richard Vellum. Sorcerer of the White Lotus Lodge is in here. Uh, Mary uh, Shelley is in here, and William Butler Yeats, and 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 more. Okay, I mean, how how ridiculous is it? It's it is it is thick. I mean, it's thick, <laughs> and um and the and the font is small. It's four hundred pages, and and they're written like this, right? I really, I really just opened it up to the uh, Olaf Stapleton, Emanuel Swedenborg page. How crazy is that, right? I just opened it right to that. So I guess I know, uh, you know, where I should start with this. And to tell you the truth, I would have probably started with Olaf Stapleton anyways. I love, 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 love. Um. Olaf Stapleton <laughs> for sci-fi. Um, very cool. So I'm glad I could show it. Very cool. There's my boy, PGI and Finn to read that in the house. Nice to see you. All right, let's see. Getting through comments, and here he is. Oh, What's boy. up, PG? Hey, man. <clears throat> oh, sounds good. How's Does it? <laughs> <laughs> the, the sound the sound is good okay that's because i didn't use my uh dime store uh bluetooth headset and i have <laughs> this brand new super clear uh thing that i'm talking through anyway how you doing i'm doing good i'm doing good yeah i took i, I throw my dollar store bluetooth on the side for lives now i was like i was like yeah it's more problem than it's worth really yeah yeah it's like why why if no one can hear you then what, i mean what am i doing <laughs> right. Anyway, so uh, hot off the. I mean, if you keep, if you, if any of you guys follow the channel, you know, you know how um, high energy it is over here at everyone who reads and must converse. Hot off the heels of David Foster Wallace, right? We did the suffering channel. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I wanted to change of pace. I was like, man, let's read a, let's buddy read another book, and I, and I chose this one. <laughs> You uh, did the tenant by Roland Toper. I I think you who who told you that this was a I, good book? Let's I name names. Heard things. <laughs> I heard things. <laughs> That's what it was. Nobody told me it was good. Oh, okay. But I did hear things and thought, hey, maybe this is interesting. It was the kind of thing where it was like you'll never guess what it what's going on, kind of yeah, thing. Never. Okay. And the twist, you know, like it was that was a thing, and I was like. I don't want to know what it is. I don't want to spoil myself. I want to read it. So I got it. I feel like if you've <laughs> ever seen an episode of the Twilight Zone, right. you're going to be let down by this book. Right. There you go. And for real. Um, so it was just, it is creepy. It is, it is weird like that. And so 
Not really. Um, it, it Long wasn't. and short of it is a it's a descent into madness, right? This guy is getting. Um, <laughs> there we go. This guy is getting an apartment and pretty quick off it. It's a little, it's a little slim read. So pretty quick off the bat, you see that he's obsessing about his neighbors and being loud and all this kind of stuff and freaking out. And I started really thinking, I'm like, okay, well this is, yeah. Why is he being like this? Maybe, maybe it's, maybe he's got some mental issue. Like we were watching a character study and like inside the head of somebody who really had mental issues. That didn't really pan out. You know, that it was that it was just him, his own hallucinations. Right. I don't know. It might <laughs> still be just him and his own hallucinations. Uh, what I take issue with is the idea that this guy has mental problems, because I I don't think because I mean, in the first thrust of the book, when he's talking to other people trying to figure out what's up with his apartment. He's talking to the what the, the chick at the front desk and speaking like a human speaks, talking to the uh, the landlord and he's yeah. having like uh, his wits about him as he's discussing the payment of the place. He's like functioning, a functioning, socialized human being. And, he's and going I think a work. function of being socialized is making sure that you fit in with your current surroundings to make you safe as a person. And so in order to be safe as a person in a place where having an apartment is scarce, you would need to make sure you keep that apartment and the rule was to be quiet. And in one thrust, he destroys his friendships at work and his friendships at home by worrying too much about making noise when his people at work just don't give a damn. And the people at his house feel like his one strike against him way too soon. Right. Now he goes, now all of this uh, obsession and ideation comes off of that, but it's fucking normal. Like it's, right. you're so, I, I might be out of my mind by saying this, but like, is that, am I the only one who, who, who thinks about like making sure that I don't piss everybody off? No, I, I don't think so. And I think, I think that it, it does work like that, but He's going, you know, he, he does allow it to stop him from doing normal things. You know what I mean? It becomes abnormal because it, he allows it to get too big. Where he's, I mean, yeah. man, he's, he's at some point, he gets to a point where he is um, having these inter internal uh, dialogues between the neighbors and other neighbors or the landlord and stuff like that. And it's this nameless, it's almost like he doesn't even really know who any of his neighbors are. They're just the neighbors, this nameless. And it becomes this scary, almost a twilight zone kind of thing where it's like anybody could be one of these neighbors that he needs to watch himself around. And it does. I mean, you know, I, I came into it kind of the same way you did when, when we were talking on Voxer that, I, I don't know if it's going to be shocking. Maybe it was shocking for its time, but whatever. But it goes completely crazy. I mean, this yeah. guy, like, gets crazy, crazy. Yeah. Uh, you know, people in the bathroom smearing crap on their faces and having strange Mask of the Red Death style, you know, dances in the courtyard as they prepare to murder right. him. I, I am not prepared to say that that was real. I don't think any of that actually happened. I was thinking like that too. And I'm like, and I'm like, but well, is it where this guy just is, you know, and it's just this imagery just for shock value. I mean, this book fits squarely in the shock value, you know, type of, type of writing, you know, but did he, did, are the neighbors messing with him at all? Are the neighbors ever messing with him? I don't know if there was anything like that or if it was really just all. There's a lot of imagery. There's a lot of things that happen that don't have any footing. And I wonder where did it, where does it come from? All right. These <clears throat> kind of things work better for a visual medium. Maybe a shocking picture showed up, shown up to jolt you, jolt, jolt the crowd. But with yeah. writing, you kind of need a reason for it, right? 
Yeah, that's because you think more when you read. You don't think so much when you see. You just kind of instantly accept what you see uh, more so than when you read, you know? Yeah. So, like, of course, like, if it's, if it, yeah. Right. Fuck this book, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't, st- like, I, I, I got. Dude, I when know, I man. got to the end, I was like, really? Right now? Like, really? Because it doesn't work. It's almost, it's totally like this. Can you we know, spoil it? Can we just ruin yeah. the whole thing right uh, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, c- yeah. close your c- close your ears, kids. Press mute if, if you don't want to hear. If y'all didn't, book. if y'all didn't uh, read it and don't want to hear it, but and but don't, I don't watch it. And don't watch my video because it's because <laughs> my video is too long. I'll tell you what happened right here. Uh, like the guy, he, he, everything goes goes left with him. It, he takes friggin' forever, you know, trying to like run away from people, and he can't run away because everyone that he knows is or everyone that he ends up running into he like in his mind it's like oh they're somehow associated with this concerted conspiracy against me the person at the coffee shop across the street keeps feeding me the same stuff that the old tenant gave me so he wants to turn me into her and that explains all this bs and like goes to his girlfriend's house and isn't and he hears his landlord knocking on her door oh then she's part of the whole crew too yada yada he gets hit randomly in the street by one of his neighbors and he's, oh no, now the neighbors are dragging me back home. And then he sees all these people do crazy pagan rituals and some guy comes up to kill him and he, and he, he jumps out the window. And then what do you know? None of that stuff was there, but everyone's wa- watching him as he's bleeding. And they're like, oh, another suicide. And he's like, oh, you did this to me. And this is, mind you, the first time that he's ever confronted anybody about what he's thinking is after he jumps out the window. Right. He and never says anything. Never said a fucking thing to him. Never get. He, he's so in like impotent. Can't do anything. Can't say anything. It's so like frustrating. And he finally. I mean, he does start doing stuff in a really crazy way. <laughs> Going out as the previous tenant, dressed yeah, as he, a girl. Yeah, he dresses that. as a woman because he wakes right. up dressed like a woman. Like right. he goes to sleep and he wakes up and he's all done up in makeup, like he's you know, catatonic, whatever you call it. You right. use two people in one body or something. And so he goes out and he's like, oh, if they want me to be a woman, then I'll dress as a woman and shock the world. And he walks outside as a woman and no one knows he exists. No one pays attention to him. And that's like the main thing that I found was like weird. Like my first like problem with this book is that like the theme of it seems to be like, I'm not, I'm not even be using this word right, but like throughout the, throughout the entire book, like this character, Cholkovsky, is the only person in the entire city of Paris who pays attention to other people. <laughs> right. Everyone else is just so focused on their own world and so like rudely so, rudely selfish about their own world that they just don't give a shit about anybody. Right, even um, his friends, like in that, yeah. in that second act or third act, where that where he finally kind of meets up with his friends again, you know, and they're <laughs> and they're and they and they just can't wait to kind of be be done with the night. He's they don't want to hang out with him. They they're not. Yeah, interested. Which, which I mean, I'm. But I, he doesn't. I spend a lot of time in Los Angeles, so that's part of the course. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah, man. It, it was it was wild. So it goes. It goes so wild there at the and then at the end there, where you don't know is, is he dressed. You know, you find out at the end. Well, he's dressed like this previous ten. He's dressed like the female there at the end. But leading up to that point, it wasn't clear that that the situation was like that. But how many times did he change his clothes? And do you even know what kind of mode he's in? And yeah. then it just and then it completely falls apart. And I'm like, why are people even? Why are why are people talking about this book then? Yeah. Uh, for the time that it was, was it sh- so shocking, or was it so out of the box thinking that you had to that it was just, or was it part of a movement? Was it yeah. part of, of a movement that you know now is defunct or or you know just had its time? Anyone here from Paris? Anyone? Anyone in the chat from right. France? Tell me right. Uh, he's a, you know he's a prolific writer. It says on the back there. So, I mean, obviously, there's a lot more than the tenant that he did. Maybe um, it's just the most well-known because of the film that was made because of it. And I think yeah. it might work better as a film, for real. <laughs> you know? Have you seen it? No. Oh. 
Um, I think, but I think just by reading it, I think, well, it might work great as a film, you know, it would just be creepy and weird and, and it doesn't need to, you know, be saying something deeper or more. It can just be a a total descent into madness, but I've read many a better descent into madnesses as far as book than this, than this one right here. You know, just chapter two in Robert Bolan- Roberto Bolaño's 2666, where Alma Fatano just, it's a complete, he goes nuts. He's just going mad. That's, a, it's, it's fantastic and so riveting. And this here, you just kind of like, wow, and what, and mm. why? <laughs> just, what, what do you find, like, what do you think is, why do you think it works in that uh, book and not in this one? What does he do that's I, different? Uh, the the reason why uh, he was going mad is a reality, is a real thing, and there's a powerlessness, but being kind of stuck in there, um, as opposed yeah. to a lack complete, of options. Yeah, this has because there were options for Shalkovsky. You right. know what I mean? There are plenty yeah. of other things yeah. he could have done. And if he always something. If this turned out to be a mental illness kind of study, and this person was unable to, yeah do things then then it would have worked better for me I, yeah a hundred percent yeah but like that would of course involve roland topor at any point of the book explaining himself which right. he neglects to do give us something at the end yeah you, oh. you throw us out there even to more confusion if, if you want to read this book and you're one of those people that likes to read the last <laughs> sentence of the book first i'm sorry this isn't going to work for you right <laughs> <laughs> yeah hey book time with ryan yeah the film is called the tenant it's the same it's the same uh roman polanski did yeah the, did produced the, directed i think he did two versions you know what I mean? wow he really uh he really loved himself some i don't know some some sh- scat shock you know <laughs> like what is going on here <laughs> I, I will say that when he when he got hit by the car and mm-hmm. then it turns out the person driving the car is a neighbor and that whole scene where he get, finally he gets taken back to the house. I was just like, oh, no, like what is happening right now? You know, and he gets dragged back there. And then that's, of course, you know, that's the climax, which was, was too late at that point. I was, I, ch- I was checked out by that time. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 <laughs> it's wild. Hey, fit to be read. Happy Friday. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, I don't know if. Uh... Okay, so I saw it on Better Than Food, Better Than Food's channel. Uh, Cliff mm-hmm. Sargent over there. That's where I saw uh, a a video on it, and I was like, and I was like, maybe I'd like this. I don't know if I watched the whole video because I was real, uh, I was real careful with that one not to kind of get any more about it because I didn't want to be, I didn't want to spoil the ending, but. I should have just, <laughs> you know, made sure I, I would have liked the book rather than, than you know, spend the time reading it. Yeah, it's whatever, man. I think House of Leaves, what, just being confusing? <laughs> yeah, it seems like one of those books, like, I'm supposed to read as a booktuber or as a person on the internet, but um, I don't know. It's House crazy. I do like it a lot, but it's but- crazy. Um, Tenant was Tenant, Tenet. Tenet, much better movie. Also, attempts to explain itself. Very, right. very. Good. It's pretty confusing yeah. as well, actually. I a lot of stuff I like about Tenant. A lot of stuff that was more confusing than than I'd like, for sure. All right, so uh, hey man, I, I I always like reading with you, man. We want to set up something else in the future. I'm totally down for it. Yeah, man. I got I got a. I'm gonna put that thing. I got a book, kind of like I've been sitting on this thing because a friend of mine uh, gave it to me, or she gave me like a, a stack of books and was like, "Nice, pick the one that you want to read." And of course, uh, in this pile of nonsense, the book is nowhere to be found. But I sent you a picture of it. Right. Um, that's not to say that we can't just read trash because I <laughs> always, <laughs> always down to read just some absolute nonsense. <laughs> That's what this was too. I mean, if I, I would, I think that is very, 
very valid just to say, you know, chalk it up to what it is. It's nonsense. It's just, and, oh, I, I did want to ask this question to the crew, all the people in the chat, yeah. because my main thing as I was reading this book was like, like I'm, I'm offended low key reading this book. Okay. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm not, um, uh, like I don't talk about how I'm doing to people cause no one, no one really gives a fuck. Right. If I tell them if things are bad, they think, oh, God, now I have to deal with his issues. He's going to put his issues out on me. So so when I read this book and I see this guy going through mental issues, uh, you know, paranoia and the like, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking about my own history of like de definitely being in sketchy spaces mentally and physically at the same time, not being OK with what's going on or knowing what's happening and having to think on my feet and make a fucking decision. Right. Um, and that colored my experience of the book to the negative because yeah. I'm thinking, oh, this guy is really screwing up the situation and that's not how you're supposed to do things, right? And this Simply is, by this not isn't, doing something? Yeah. Simply by not doing anything? Or, or taking the wildest action possible, you know? Right. Like not trying to achieve normality in any sense. He goes way the other side and it's like, right. I'm going to, I'm going to show them what for, and like, yo, you're going to kill yourself? That's showing them what for? Isn't right. that what they wanted you to do? Like, yeah. that's not, right. like, you're, you're not making any sense by yeah. your own logic, right? Yeah. So, so I'm reading this book kind of already by, by page 64. I was like, this book blows. This book is not working out, you know? And it just continued to be that way. But how bad am I, like, how, how wrong am I? by reading, like, I've got to be reading this book wrong, right? Like, how do you read a book objectively? How do you read a book without you, reflecting? You like, Yeah, you can't. But I, I think that that's one of the great things about, like, this whole, what, we, what the community does here is, like, just shows that subjective experience of the book is what it's all about, especially something like this, man. This book's been experienced for, you know, decades, right? Yeah. But I mean, is it though? Like, like there's got to be something more, right? Because here's the, here's the here's well, the thing, I mean, right? There was there was more to this book, sure, but it's cultural. It's not our culture, and like, so we have yeah. to read it from in our own experience. We have to, and that's saying, there's no right or wrong in that way. You know what I mean? Yes, I hear that. Um, I was thinking though, um, people often say. And I've been thinking about this ever since I started this channel, you know, in the halcyon days of the coronavirus. I was thinking, people always say that books and reading makes you smarter. And the entire time that I've been reading these books, I've been thinking, like, how, right? Like, how does reading make you smarter? Because I, sure. I, I, I don't know about that. And so as I read, I, I, I think what they mean, I think what they mean is that as you read, you get to learn things through this code of language that you didn't know before. Um, and you get to reflect on yourself and learn things about yourself that you didn't understand before, which is really how you learn through this code. Because you, sure. have, to take, you have to take ideas which are unconnected in your brain and in your history and put them together in this new way that this code has shown you as a kind of mental map how to put these things together. So you can take these ideas and put them into practice, which is why people who read self-help books are reading self-help books wrong. Because you're not supposed to just read it and be entertained. You're right. supposed to take it as instruction and judge the result of the instruction and not the prose of the self-help book. Sure, okay? sure. So that's what I mean when I say I've gotta be reading this thing wrong, right? What, what am I supposed to take from this book? Cause I didn't get any, right. I didn't feel better that I was able to, you know, reason through my own issues better than this fictional character. Uh, I, I didn't, you know what I mean? Like, I just, it, I felt like, I felt like made fun of by reading this right. book. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, I mean, and maybe, maybe there's something to be said about that for sure. Because by not, by making this character just a regular Joe, that go, that this is, this is what happens to it, you know, kind of plays it where, you know, where, where you, it's not a real person. It's not a, a real human character. It does. It's flat like that. It's just a punching bag for what he wants to do. And what does he want to do? He wants to shock the reader. It's a shock value book. I thought of it like some of the worst Chuck Palahniuk stuff. 
is what this kind of struck me as. Just just shock value for shock value. And it's like, well, I'm not I'm I'm not for that. <laughs> um it definitely it definitely is something to be said about that. I think you're I think you're right with saying that. That you you know, you you taking a book I do the same thing. You know, take it, internalize it, what you get out of it is what you get out of it. And you know, I am reluctant to really be really hard on a book if I think that there's a lot of it that I might be missing or something valid that I might be missing. But uh when it comes down to it, it you don't know it anything, right? <laughs> you don't yeah. know it anything. Screw that, man. I mean, we've already spent spent time uh, reading it and and yeah. saying the guy's name, and there's a memory <laughs> of of this, you know, his legacy, whatever, right? Yeah. You don't know anything. <laughs> what do you mean by that book? Time with Ryan, going into books completely blind. Do you mean like just going into the library and just being like, oh, this will do? Boom. Or like, <laughs> like, Random. You know what I mean, like, or, or 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 are you just making sure that you're not reading anything other than the no synopsis review? Yeah, right. other, no, other than no what's intro, on the back. no synopsis, yeah. no no. Is it like that, or is it really just random, completely random book, like title only? Yeah. Also, uh, what book was that the same uh, the same guy? Yeah, book time with Ryan. Also, also said I haven't read the book, but. I do think some people just seem to pick the wrong way or freeze in decision making, but making sense isn't what someone in the situation can measure themselves off of. I disagree. I think that is exactly what you have to measure. Just you measure your uh, yourself off of. I mean, there's a there is like because like you can make a mistake and learn from that mistake, but if you keep making mistakes, then you're you know what I mean like. You know what I'm saying it's not like you're still a, it's not like your sense of reasoning is just fine if you keep fucking up you know what you I mean like the results matter character right and, and 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 by extension anyone who who makes a decision under high pressure right 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 yeah I mean there was there's so much of that you you know where you read it you read it and then, then you say hey man stop wait stop don't do that wait stop don't do that, you know, yeah. and turn around yeah. like, you know, wow, what is going on here? And then it's just, it's like tiny bad decision, tiny oh, wrong view yeah. after wrong view. And then it compiles and then you're like, wow, this guy's batshit crazy now. Like yeah. he's completely lost it and, yeah. and he's too far gone. Yeah, he's and not, it, he's not trying there to. There is no, there is no love for that character by Roland Topor and how his. You know, there's no by making it an everyman. It's like, well, this is, you know, the plight of the everyman. This is it is. It, it does not surprise me that Lagatti uh, referenced this book in his book, The Conspiracy Against the Human Race, because it is a dark. You know, there's not a lot of humanity in this right here. That it's it's fear, it's confusion, it's, you know. Uh, secrets and not knowing and and you know what what is looking to get you from a place that you don't know where it's coming from like from the shadows or from you know around the corner it's just and there's and there's not much else to be said about it like what what is the substance of this thing there's not much else to be said we've already said it i think you know pretty much all the substance that there is to to be pulled out of this book. It's really just a, just an experience, just to have some, you know, have a shocking experience. I've gone to books, into books for shock value before. Maybe if, yeah, if but... I was, if I was in that kind of mode or that time, I would have enjoyed this book more, you know, something like that. But yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> it was, it was, it was unexpected. I didn't expect, I mean, you know, I never hey, expected Mindy. to be disappointed. That's for sure. Hey, Mindy, happy Friday. Thanks for coming by. <laughs> so he says, I go in completely blind. <laughs> like, like you I think, mean Braille? Like, what do you mean a, by completely takes blind? Pitch, take, takes a, an ice pick to the eyeballs, right? <laughs> the book. Yes. <laughs> I love it. That's funny. <laughs> 
<laughs> Quentin orders books drunk and approaches it blank slate sober. <laughs> Good job, Quentin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, if you're if you're mentally ill, you'll sense maybe maybe be off on how to measure yourself. Like if you have, yeah, but I mean, I'm saying that this character struck me as having a mental deficiency in some way at some points in the book to try to make sense of what's yeah. going on. Yeah, he says he says not. that as like an excuse for Roland Topor. Yeah. yeah. Because otherwise the book doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but he didn't put that in this book. There's, there's no indication that this character has a mental illness. It's just an, an obsession that he allows to be unchecked and even actually feeds. I mean, if you feed something, you're going to allow it to, you know, take over yeah. your life in a big way. Right. Hey, Jack, have, have a good dinner, brother. Happy Friday. All that. <laughs> yeah. The further a character spirals, the less their points of references align with reality. And uh, that, that happens in this book. By the end of it, you're, <laughs> you're definitely not in reality. That's yeah, true. actually, by by the uh, last act of the book, he starts thinking that he's never been close to anybody. Right. Like he has these internal thoughts of, oh, I've like I've never understood sexuality when he clearly understands sexual chemistry between his friends groups and just random girls he meets. But it's he's... just, oh, I remember that 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 girl Sabrina, right? That's Which the, one? the previous tenant's friend that he kind of hooks oh. up. Oh. Uh, so yeah, whatever her name. Oh, it doesn't matter. Sabrina. What the name is. No, it, no, Sabrina. but sure. <laughs> right? Yeah. Whatever. Who cares? <laughs> but then there was. But then there was. It's just this dream when he's like really losing it, and he has like this dream kind of vision, and he sees the girl Sabrina on the beach, walking along the beach, and then two guys show up in suits and shoot her in the head. You know what I mean? Hmm. And like just execute her on the beach. And it's like what? Wait, what? And I and I was kind of thinking, I'm like, okay, well, like, is this foreshadowing? What does this mean? And I kind of held that dream in my mind, you know, to kind of use it as a reference point. No reason. Just shock you, just to have an, yeah. an, an execution in the book, you know, kind of thing. And it's like, okay, but he, then he's scared about he's going to be executed by what? Then you know what? making him kill himself? You know what? That's this is it. The book is finished. We've we have gotten all the meat off of this bone. We can continue going into bits of the story. Like, oh, this didn't make sense. That didn't make. But like, yeah, it didn't make sense. It did. One one star was right. <laughs> it's yeah, it's a, yeah. That it book. definitely doesn't. It definitely doesn't make sense. It definitely wasn't all that. But I think we did it. I think hopefully we did a little something to, you know, down just just downplay a little bit the. If anybody, if you have this on your TBR and you don't own it, don't worry about it. Like, really, don't worry about it. If you don't yeah. own this book, don't worry about it. If you got it, maybe, you know, if, if, you're, if you like Chuck Palahniuk, you know, if you like yeah. the, the, the shock value stuff, then go for it. You might, you might like it. It, it did kind of <laughs> – it was so messy. Yeah. Just such a messy – Whatever. <laughs> non, non sequiturs, man. Non sequiturs. Yeah, all all over the place. So um very cool, dude. I'll um I'll check it out. I don't have that book that you showed me, but I do have uh a lot of things. We'll come up we'll come up with something in the future. Uh, not not up for any more David Foster Wallace, are you? I am. I, I definitely am nice. up for more David Foster Wallace, no doubt. Nice. I don't have much more to read. I, if, if you want, I'd love to read it with you. It does have a cool cover. Let's see. Um, I think the first short story collection is called A Girl with Curious Hair. I'd you read already that. read that one, yeah? I have not read that. Oh. Not the first short story collection. Yeah, let's do it. It's called A Girl with Curious Hair. So he wrote the broom of the system. That's his first uh, book right out of, right out of university. 
and or it was his thesis you know they turned into a novel and then this short story collection is like the first thing that he came out with you know as a as a writer so it might be cool to do it then to get you know where he was at the beginning you know just what he tried with his first short story collection because we've already read his last Mm -hmm. i haven't read uh room of the system no it has though yeah it's funny as hell (laughs) it's i mean uh it's hilarious it's laugh out loud funny book time with ryan see you later happy friday all good all good very cool. All right, let's do uh, The Girl with Curious Hair then. I'm definitely down for it, man. I picked it up. I found it at a thrift store for freaking like nothing, so I, I grabbed it. It's been sitting on the on the shelf for a while. Okay. I'm getting more. I'm turning more into a dude, bro, as we continue on. <laughs> right. Especially Steve. Steve must have busted out, too, <laughs> because if <laughs> you know he'd yeah. be piping up if he heard me, if he heard us talking about reading some more David Foster Wallace. Yeah, man, I'm I'm trying to be a I'm trying to be a fake booktuber, man. I gotta get, I gotta get more superficial with my reading choices. I can't just be reading stuff I want to read. Right. Pretty soon See. you'll be, you know, you pretty soon you'll be telling me which pinch on you're gonna start. Well, no, I want to read pinch on. I'm saying I'm gonna I'm gonna be just reading <laughs> Sarah J. Mass and right, shit, like, you know, <laughs> Sally Green. <laughs> that's 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 the new normal, man. That's okay. what I'm into. <laughs> I got the new Sally Rooney. Oh, it's sad out here. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right. Hey, baby. Happy Friday. I think my my woman's home and that's all good. So I think we did it good. Yeah, we we did. We did quite enough. (laughs) Happy Friday, PG. Thank you for getting on with me. It's been real, man. And thank you, everybody, for crushing an hour with me Friday night. That's how we do it. And, um. I, I promise, uh, you know, not not to not to just get on and, and bash a bash a book unless it totally deserves it. So, yeah, you know, you don't you don't find that kind of content here unless it's deserved. I think catch on the next ones, guys. Bye bye. <laughs>